I'm Dr. Ruzix, the kidney transplant surgeon and director of the Kidney Transplant Center at St. Joseph Hospital. It's my pleasure to speak to you and your family today about uh, kidney failure and transplantation. First of all, I'd like to say that there are many different causes of kidney failure. And by the time you come to a transplant center, it probably doesn't make much difference exactly why your kidneys have failed. It, it could have been diabetes, which is our most common diagnosis, hypertension, uh, inflammation of the kidneys caused by the immune system that we call glomerulonephritis, or many other causes. But by the time you're referred for transplant evaluation, your options basically boil down to the same uh, choices. Namely, something will have to be done to replace your kidney function to keep you alive. Today, there are only two things we can do to replace kidney function. One of them is dialysis, and the other one is transplantation. Dialysis is an outstanding treatment. It's a life-saving treatment that you can have at any time, no matter what your condition or your circumstances, but it provides only about 12% of the function you used to have when your kidneys were healthy. For most people, that's not enough. Patients on dialysis have lives that are much shorter than they should have been. Those that receive kidney transplants will get much more function than dialysis can ever provide, enough function to be healthy and strong again. In addition, patients that receive kidney transplants will live twice as long as they would have lived if they stayed on dialysis. Unfortunately, only about 77,000 out of the 325,000 patients on dialysis ultimately become candidates for transplantation. Um, the remainder of the patients would live longer and be healthier remaining on dialysis. These candidates that go on to receive kidney transplants regain enough function to be strong and healthy and their lives are doubled, which is why we try to do transplantation whenever possible. Candidates for transplantation have two ways of getting a kidney. Most patients go onto the national waiting list to receive a kidney from an individual who has died and whose family has volunteered to donate the organs for transplantation. We refer to these donors as deceased donors. Unfortunately, the 77,000 people on the waiting list for deceased donors received only 10,000 kidneys last year. This has led to a very, very severe shortage of kidneys for transplantation and a very long waiting time. This long waiting time is currently our greatest problem and greatest challenge to our patients today. 